I feel compelled to share with you guys an insight that just emerged for us in conversation about how to raise our children, you know, these beings that we love more than anything in the world. Part of what we love so much about our children is their innocence. It is their purity. And we want to protect that purity. We want to protect these luminous beings from the, the harshness of the world. You know, I imagine myself having a son or a daughter and wanting to nurture and to protect that innocence at all costs. And so it begs the question, of course, you know, can I be there to protect her forever? And if I cannot and I'm not able, am I committing a crime by not instead preparing her for the world. And so the question is, do we protect our loved ones, our children from the world, or do we prepare them for the world? And of course, I mean not do we protect them from beauty, truth, love, and light. These are the things I want to nurture, but it is their innocence mostly that I'm wrestling with. Do I protect their innocence from the awareness of mortality? Do I protect their innocence from the awareness of death? Do I protect their innocence and their purity from the fact that... It's impossible. That's impossible. You can't do that. You know, you can't protect uh, there is going to be self-discovery of mortality. You can't protect them not to discover mortality. At one yeah, point, yeah, but 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 that's that but but it, die. But have some compassion, please, for that beautiful child, right? Like, have some compassion for that that beautiful luminous being. She's two years old. She's the light of your life. She loves and lights up your life. Okay, and you are sitting at your desk looking out the window. It's golden hour in a beach in Massachusetts, and she's playing in the sand with the splashing water. She's two and a half year old. Your, your eyes well up. You know, it's like a scene in a movie. It's postcard consciousness. You are moved to the point of tears. You don't cry when something is sad. You cry when something is more beautiful than you expected it to be. And this creature who is so innocent and who you love so much, right? No, no. Come, come, there's bikes coming. This creature who you love so much, this being who is so innocent and so pure, and you're so moved by her purity that, you, that, you're, that you're weeping. You, you are saying to me that you still think that she has to be told she's going to die one day? No, that she has to come she, to no, understand no, that death not, exists? You don't, need to, you don't need to tell her. She will realize that. By herself. But that what? A, that's a crime. No, that's not a crime. That's a crime. Well, that's no. That's. I not think a cr it's a no, crime. No. Well, I, I think, think it's so. a travesty. I think it's. A, I okay. think. I cannot think of something more horrific. You know, my mother says this to me. She's like, you know, she says, I love you more than my own life. I mean, she would say this to me as a kid, and it's like, or this this wonderful film I just caught, I just watched called called Beautiful Boy about this. This, this kid who becomes a heroine and meth addict and his father, you know, his father has to, from the point of view of the father, imagine what that does to a father to see a child suffering so horribly, you know, to, that he couldn't protect his kid from the existential anguish of a world that would tell him that the only way beyond his pain was through heroin. Right? It's the ultimate innocence lost and the bereavement of a father realizing he can't save the ones he loves. And that's what that whole video was. It. We want to save those we love and saving literally means protecting from the dark. Not preparing them for a world full of disappointment, disease, and death. But saving them from that world. Keeping them in the Garden of Eden. Dude, if you saw that movie, you would weep because it's so beautiful and you want to protect those you love that, that much. Don't you? Yeah, if we, if we, if we could protect uh, them from that, that would be fine and dandy, but we, we can't. We just cynical. Can, we can, we cynical. Can, no, we can, that's realistic. Realistic. <laughs> cynical. No, that's realistic. Okay. We, cannot, we, can, we can protect them until one point, until we can't anymore. And I get it. when we can't anymore, that's, where, that's when they need to be prepared I to get take it. the world on by themselves. <laughs> because there's no more father and mother's protection. But I sense in your proclamation, I sense, at least for a moment, uh, invulnerability that I know is a facade. Because I've seen you grieve. I've seen you, you know, behind the glasses. I've seen you moved. I've seen a little boy in pain. And I, when I see that little boy in pain, I, I grieve for that boy in pain. And ultimately, that boy in pain is like my son or my daughter and the pain that I want to protect them from. And so, again, it just, it just begs the question. And I respect your opinion. 
even if that opinion is a profound psychological defense scaffolding that allows you to be a stoic instead of admit the, uh, the vulnerability of, and pain and loss that you no doubt have experienced, as we all have. Yeah. And I still... And, will, and, and, and much, well, much more. Okay. You, you have no idea how much more pain it, there is in store for us. And all. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Okay. <laughs> through, through perhaps a force of will and will alone, you know, through a force of ecstatic vocalization and raptured articulation, I will summon a narrative in which I can protect those I love from everything. You know, where love can exceed everything. Mm. You know, I, I just, I don't know. I just, I, I, I believe, I want to believe. I live as if in the halo of my love, I can protect you even from death. That's what I need to believe. I can't function, I don't think, without believing that, at least when I emanate that towards those I love. They are safe because I love them. But, you know, I mean, well, that's also what I need to say. I need to say that. I can't function if I don't say it like that. Ultimately, we'll, we all are safe all the time because we are in God's love, you know. Okay, you there can, you go. You can, you can and now you have that. come around, and now you have come around. Now you, now you have come full circle. Because you're saying ultimately then we are all safe. Not ultimately there is loss or pain. That is not, everything will be okay at the end. And if it is not yet okay, it is not yet the end. <laughs> you know, the like, second law of thermodynamics. Well, call it the second law of thermodynamics says what? Says no? Well, it says that everything is going to decay. Everything right? ends. Ah, I don't like to believe that, but whatever. Okay, um, point is I feel very strongly about this and I wrestle with this and like, like Ethan Hawke in the film Before Sunrise, when he sits at midnight, looks at Julie Delpy, and they're talking about having children one day. And he says, I looked at this kid, and I couldn't believe that I was looking at something that was going to die one day. I just could never forget that. And I feel the same way. And I just wanted to share. No, it's, it's you know, it's, uh, I, uh, it's not going to end. Uh, ever, ever, like uh, Rumi said, uh, don't grieve. Uh, because nothing is lost. Everything comes around back just in a different form. Amen. Hope you're right. <laughs>